Hey guys, it's me. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Bear with me. Alright, so. New video. New week. It's been a while since my last one. Sorry about that. Um, just kind of trying to figure out my way through life right now at the moment. Um, especially with limited places to go and things to do outside of painting and reviewing. Um, but yeah. So, you'll probably notice that I will flop back and forward from camera to actual camera. Um, so, I might go cross-eyed every now and then. <laughs> Anywho, so, I recently did some shopping. Uh, I'm always on the hunt for art supplies. I do collect a lot and I love trying new things. Um, new things definitely, uh, I guess, inspire me. Like a new palette, new sketchbook, new design invention <laughs> uh, definitely helps revive my in my mind to keep those little gears rolling um, but yeah so my most recent purchase was a uh, 12 pan watercolor set from Old Holland um, let's get that open Ta -da! look at that she's fancy y'all anyways so yeah I butchered that uh, swatch card Anywho, so, this is not a paid sponsorship, I should probably say that. Uh, I have no way affiliated with Old Holland, I'm not being paid, I just like doing this for fun. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, um, and I guess I can dive in a little bit into the s small history of uh, Old Holland. Now, they've been around since 1664, which is pretty cool. Um, they are still well into their traditional ways of creating paint. They offer oils, acrylics, watercolors, and a couple other things that you can find on their website. Um, I believe they have a like a year by year rundown of the history of them, which is pretty cool. I really liked reading that. Um, and if you want to read it yourself, feel free to check out their website. Maybe I'll leave a link in the bottom. Um, yeah, yeah. So. I talk a lot, I had a Red Bull, <laughs> but um, for me personally, when it comes to watercolor brands and um, companies, I really enjoy a traditional, long-run history of watercolors. Um, brands that are very dedicated to what they create and supply their customers with um, means a lot, because that means they really care as opposed to just a company putting out, you know, oh, we have watercolors for sale. And they really don't care about the ingredients or the way that they're made or how special and important these paints are to some people. Um, especially with like ingredients, you know, some ingredients are hard to find. Pigments can run paint tubes from like four bucks to 20 bucks. Um, not specifically with Old Holland, but I know like other brands like Daniel Smith, um, Windsor & Newton, they do have some pretty pricey tubed paints, but that just goes for how they're made, the quality, and just what they have inside as far as pigments. Um, anywho, back to me. <laughs> Alright, awesome. Back, back again. Kind of trailed off there for a little bit. So yeah, I just discussed just a little bit of why I like paints, and, you know, why I buy new ones, and who Old Holland is, and what it's about. I'm getting pretty tired. <laughs> been a long day um, I hope you guys like the review I'll drop some links in the bottom and um, I'll let you enjoy some voiceover and some tunes <laughs> all right cool see you in a bit and here it is the old Holland 12 pan set now it opens in a very traditional setting it's got that pretty nice matte black finish all over the inside fold-out part has the 10 wells, which is pretty nice, you know, 12 colors, 10 wells, you know, you got it, you're good. <laughs> it's got the four square wells on top, which is nice mixing space, and it comes with a fun old Holland Classic Watercolors swatch card, which you'll see me demonstrate on later in the video. Now, it did come with a cool brush. This is a squirrel brush, and I'll be talking about that later in the video with the uh, swatching part. So for now, I'm basically just gonna snap it shut, and then we're gonna reopen it, remove that base. <laughs> um, I don't know how to make videos, but hey, we're learning. 
Um, I'm taking out each one one by one and we're just going to unwrap them. Now, the base obviously comes out of the paint palette and it reveals a few more wells at the very bottom of the paint palette. A lot of people like to remove um, the base, which I'm using right now, and kind of use that as extra space, but I personally don't like doing that because I like that the paints and the palette are in one spot together instead of taking pieces out and using them separately. Oh, there's Hercules making an appearance. You'll see him bop in and out of the video. Um, at some point he does knock over like part of the <laughs> part of my um, table part set up here. Um, so that's pretty fun. It was fun to clean up. He's obviously pushing his way into the video, so I had to maneuver my setup. What can you do? <laughs> Now, my favorite part about this is that each pan was wrapped up in gold foil. Now, I am a huge sucker for packaging that is cute and pretty and just, it makes you feel special, especially when something is, you know, um, you know kind of has a nice history behind it, you know? It shows that a company and a brand really cares about their product and kind of wants to present it very well to their clients or customers. <laughs> So that's a nice touch, you know, a little nice design touch. Now, here's the colors. Very nice, very vibrant. It doesn't look like they're poured into the pans, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, I know some brands' paints um, work differently out of tube than they are made and processed in a factory and plopped into the little pans. Um, but I've yet to try Old Holland in the tube, so I really have no say on which is better or if they are the same. Um, unwrapping each one was fun and exciting. Um, I decided to keep that foil intact because I was thinking about maybe using it for some artwork or, I don't know, you know, keeping in a drawer with no life to live. <laughs> so what I also realized while unwrapping each of these little things was that when I would snap them back into the base they were kind of loose very loose and I realized that they would probably fall out now obviously I've dealt with this before because I have several other palettes from different brands so if you do get this palette and experience the same like loose pans floating around and maybe falling out your best bet would be to remove them all and kind of just bend the metal little part, the little clamp that holds it in and it clicks into. Um, the little pan should click into uh, place and be quite snug inside um, and not flopping around and falling out. Halfway through, I realized that I can just slip them out of the wrapping and then unfold them, which definitely saved a lot of time than having to individually wrap um, individually unwrap each pan, so, you know, hey, live and learn. <laughs> uh, alrighty, so I'll let, uh, I'll continue this, let it go on, enjoy watching Hercules and I struggle <laughs> with his, um, existence. <laughs> oh, I think this is, yep, that's it. <laughs> that was it. Oof. Oh well, he's a drama queen. Cool, so I'll sit back and let y'all enjoy the rest of this with some music and then I'll pop back in to talk about some other stuff in the video. Enjoy.
And here's the brush that came with the set. It's a French, French fancy squirrel brush. <laughs> um, and I've never actually owned, I guess you could call it professional brush like this before. Um, I'm not sure how much it sells for on its own. I, I guess I'll have to double check that. Um, Scratch and Baby Hercules, he can't uh, let me get to work without him being in it. Spraying down the paint, always fun to do when you're about to get to work. Now, here we have the swatch card that came with the Old Holland set. I personally wasn't really prepared with um, how much paint and water the brush held in. Um, you'll see with the orange, I kind of just was like, whoa, that's a lot of paint. So it took me quite a hot minute to figure out how to use the brush and get used to how much water uh, it held. If I guess, you know, you could put that much water into it. Um, the swatch card itself was very thin and kind of flimsy. I am so used to other paint palettes that come with a thick, sturdy watercolor stock paper. Um, I mean, it's not necessary. But, you know, it's just personal preference, but hey, it's not that big a deal. I'm just stating <laughs> what I saw and felt and what I'm used to. Anywho, I feel like a brat. So these colors are really pretty. They're all very vibrant and they flow super, super nicely. You'll see the green that I just laid down is actually blooming um, pretty fast. And, you know, this, the paper that I'm using is a handmade cold press paper, um, cotton, and that definitely does so well especially with that darker green that I just laid down I completely forgot the name of that green but you'll see in a moment um, after the swatching I will be playing with the blooming effects and we've got baby Bruno in the background whining because he wants to go out and he's been out five times today so if you keep hearing that my bad <laughs> um, but yes favorite part blooming this is what bloom porn <laughs> what people like to call things that they enjoy watching <laughs> but yes look at that that is just amazing i put that in slow motion i thought y'all would like that um so yeah i'll just let you enjoy the rest of this by yourselves <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video I just showed y'all, did for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I will leave links in the bottom, as they say, uh, to, you know, stuff that I said before. I hope <laughs> this video was good enough for you as it was for me. Um, next videos will be more put together, I promise. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you have any comments or, you know, suggestions or things you want to see next time, uh, leave the comments in below. <laughs> um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope y'all have a very nice week slash weekend. All right. Bye. <laughs>